On January 14th, I published a video talking about the risks that the Terra ecosystem faces, especially in regards to the dwindling anchor yield reserve. Just 10 days later, Do Kwan tweeted a poll saying, don't want to get another DM about anchor protocol yield reserve. What do you want? Asking how much money should be put into the yield reserve. And of course, overwhelmingly, people voted for the largest option, $300 million. Around two weeks after that, it was announced that $450 million would be used to backstop the anchor reserves. This backstopping of the anchor yield reserve is the first major action taken by the Luna Foundation Guard, which is a brand new organization. In this video, we're going to go through the timeline of what actually happened in the last month for Terra Luna, including the creation of the Luna Foundation Guard and just how close the anchor yield reserves were to hitting zero. We're going to outline the change in risks associated with the Terra Luna ecosystem and anchor, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on whether or not I think it's safe to hold UST or put your money back into anchor. If you find these videos valuable, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button to help the video do well with the YouTube algorithm. So on January 14th, I published a video outlining my concerns with the Terra ecosystem, and more specifically, the dwindling anchor yield reserves combined with the massive leverage buildup with Abracadabra's DGenBox strategy. I thought that the combination of these things could pose a major threat to Terra and the UST peg, and I wasn't the only person talking about this. Just five days later, an organization called the Luna Foundation Guard, or LFG, was created. This new foundation was given an initial gift of $5 billion worth of Luna from Terraform Labs, which is the organization that created Luna and UST in the first place. At the core of LFG is a seven-member council, which votes on the uses of the funds. Their stated goals are to protect the UST peg and to encourage growth in the ecosystem. This is interesting because these are some of the exact things related to the Anchor Protocol Yield Reserve. But there's kind of a bigger question here. What is the difference between TFL, Terraform Labs, and LFG, the Luna Foundation Guard? After all, two of the founding members of Terraform Labs, including Do Kwan, are two members of the Council on LFG. And I'd imagine that Do Kwan has a huge influence on the decisions of this new organization. But why not do this all through Terra in the first place? After all, the money is coming directly from Terraform Labs, and Do Kwan is still the CEO of Terraform Labs. My main theory is that LFG was created in order to be able to move very fast in the case of any problems with the Terra ecosystem. LFG is a war chest of over $5 billion, which is a huge amount of money to be controlled by only a council of seven people. Terraform Labs, on the other hand, is a huge organization, and they've taken money from investors, which means that investors likely have board seats. Moving multi-billion dollar decisions through a big organization and getting board approval can take a lot of time. And if there's a major risk to the Terra ecosystem, you'd want to be able to move much quicker. So anyway, five days after that, we get this tweet by Do Kwan saying he's tired of getting DMs about the Anchor Protocol yield reserve. It's a pretty funny tweet, and Do Kwan's irreverence in the face of somewhat serious issues is one reason why he's so popular among the Luna community. So putting that aside, I think it's very likely that Do Kwan also saw the risks of the yield reserve depleting. I don't think it's likely that he decided to move hundreds of millions of dollars just because he was tired of getting DMs. This tweet was a good way for him to downplay the issue, alleviating concerns, while at the same time saying that he's going to do something about it. Again, alleviating concerns. So we get another spicy tweet a day later saying so many pleb takes on Anchor Protocol may have to do with Thread soon. It definitely feels like he's talking about us. So on January 27th, we get the promised thread on Do Kwan's take on the Anchor Yield Reserve problem. He acknowledges that the yield reserves are declining and that people are worried about it. One reason he mentioned that people might be worried was that yield reserves should always operate at a surplus. Obviously, this was never one of my concerns, and I think it's a little bit of a straw man attack. I feel like most people weren't concerned about there being a deficit, but about the magnitude of the deficit, as well as its acceleration. Every single day, the deficit was getting worse and worse compared to the previous days. And then he does mention the yield reserve depletion having consequences as another concern that people had, which is definitely true given the leverage buildup in the system. So he kind of dismisses and says that he doesn't understand the first reason, which is fine, but that implies that he does understand the reason for concern on this second point. His counter is that if the yield reserve depletes, an anchor will operate just like any other money market, saying that even without the yield reserve, anchor would still offer a very high rate of return on UST of 15 to 16%. Running today's actual numbers, 
the income generated from borrowing and staking returns is around $650 million per year. And there are currently $6.5 billion deposited earning interest on Anchor. This means that at today's prices, the actual market yield would be closer to 10%, not 15 or 16%, which is still not bad. One question that comes to mind, which we'll talk about later, is that if the rate of 15 to 16% is still way higher than other stablecoin returns, why not just cut the target rate to that amount? So then Do goes on to mention some plans that Anchor Protocol has to bring the borrow rates more in line with the deposit rates. And finally, reassures everyone that he is still planning on finding ways to backstop this yield reserve. So then a couple of weeks go by and on February 7th, we get this post. This post acknowledges that the yield reserves are about to run out and then talks about a few things. First, something that we already knew, that these high anchor yields are driving people to the Terra ecosystem. The author mentions that it's a good marketing tool and that the yield reserve should be thought of as a marketing budget to bring people in. The author also talks about how the anchor yield and anchor itself is a base for multiple other applications that are built on Terra. And they mentioned that in the medium term, the anchor team is working on solutions to fix this imbalance between the deposit yields and the borrow interest. So overall, the author asks for $450 million to continue the high yields in order to incentivize more people coming into the protocol, to protect these other apps that are built on Anchor, and to buy time until Anchor can fix some of these underlying problems. It's worth noting that at this point, there are only $17 million left in the Anchor yield reserves, which are depleting at a rate of around $2 million per day, which leaves less than 10 days left before the reserves run out. So finally, on February 10th, just seven days before the Anchor Yield Reserve is scheduled to run out, we get a message from Doquan saying that the LFG board has decided to implement this plan and put $450 million to work to backstop the Anchor Yield Reserves. In order to get the $450 million US Terra, LFG is converting their Luna into Terra. It's worth noting that this will create downward pressure on the price of Luna because as Luna is converted to Terra, the peg is pressured and requires arbitragers to come in to fix that. And the way that those arbitragers maintain the peg is by burning US Terra and creating Luna. Do goes on to say that over the next 10 to 15 days, they'll convert their Luna into UST in chunks in order to top up the yield reserve. And while I'm not sure that the mirror tracker is accurate to reflect these new funds, it did pop up on February 14th to $28 million. So obviously that's a lot of information. Now let's get into what we really want to know. Is the UST peg safe? Is the Terra ecosystem safe? And is it safe to put your money back into Anchor Protocol? So first of all, this is an amazing step and it does drastically reduce the risk of any of these bad events happening. These actions also validate the concerns that a lot of people had about the yield reserves hitting zero because why else would they pump $450 million into this problem? So while my main worries of a DPEG of UST are alleviated, there still are a number of concerns that haven't been addressed by Do. First of all, one thing that was never mentioned during all of this was the DGEM box strategy that I talked about in my last video. I just checked and over $750 million of UST are still locked into this contract. The concerns of cascading liquidations were validated when on January 26th, users being liquidated on Abracadabra caused Time Wonderland to crash. So beyond the risks that Doquan didn't mention, which is leverage in the system, it's worth talking about the actions that the Luna Foundation Guard didn't do, mainly lowering the interest rate. According to Doquan, the interest rates without subsidizing the yield would still be the highest return on stablecoins by far. My main question is that if this is the case, why not just let those yields fall to their natural levels? You would still be attracting a lot of people to the Anchor ecosystem, even if the yield was around 10%, which is what my math shows today. I think the main reason is that any announcement about dropping of yields could be a catalyst that shocks the Terra Luna ecosystem. Because of this large amount of leverage in the system, any shock to the ecosystem could start this cascading liquidation. The main shock of the yield reserve hitting zero is no longer a concern, but it's possible that even dropping the interest rates would shake confidence enough for people to start pulling their money out, causing a shock. Now, personally, I think that the UST peg could probably handle a drop in interest rates. Putting in $450 million as a backstop without dropping the interest rates feels a little bit like kicking the can down the road. What I wish would have happened would be a drop in the target interest rate, maybe to something like 17%, which is still really good. 
at the same time as the announcement of increasing the yield reserves. Having the good news about the yield reserves increasing with the bad news of dropping the interest rate could help smooth out any shocks to the UST peg, while at the same time taking care of some of those underlying problems right now. But like I said before, I feel like the main major catalyst to USC depegging is now gone, which can make all of us feel a lot better, especially when there are protocols like White Whale and Kujira Orca, which could help in the case of some of these lesser bad events happening. So overall, I think this was a good move by the Terra Luna team, and I feel much better now that this negative potential catalyst has been alleviated. That said, there is still too much leverage in the system, and the interest rate is still too high, which means we might be having the same exact conversation one year from now. So, is the 20% yield on Anchor Protocol worth the risks? While everyone's financial situation and risk tolerance is different, for my situation, I would say yes, I'm probably going to put a little bit of money back into the Anchor Protocol. I am doing this with the understanding that a unforeseen catalyst could cause a liquidation cascade and I could lose all of the money that I'm putting in. Let me know what you're planning on doing in the comments down below. And if you're interested in staying up to date and getting a deeper knowledge of DeFi protocols, this channel is for you. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.